What's going on guys, it's Quit Talking Paintball, and today I wanted to go over some must-have gear. Uh, this will most likely be a multi-part video, um, as there's obviously a lot of gear to kind of cover uh, in paintball. But today, I wanted to focus on gauges. As you guys can see here, I have a, I think a 2-inch gauge uh, attached to a old ASA, on-off ASA. I bought this for about 20 bucks a few years ago, and this gauge was about 8 bucks last week. Um, as I was running this small ANS gauge that I probably bought for 12 bucks, um, quite a bit smaller. As you can see in the increments, there's few and far in between. With a gauge like this, there's plenty of little ticks to kind of get an accurate measurement of the pressures. Now, you may be asking yourself, What's this for? If you guys aren't familiar with output pressure in tanks, they kind of vary. Um, it's not an exact science. Sure, you can have an adjustable output pressure and they typically add in shims or certain springs to meet the output pressure. But it's not an exact science in the sense that two shims equals this pressure. It's really a range of pressures. And if you're having issues with your, your tank regulator, you need to be able to kind of check that and just throwing it into a gun is not it's not really a good way to, to do so so with a on off asa or even the duck bill that i have here i bought this for like 10 bucks um i bought these for different purposes but we'll see in this now this gauge goes to a thousand psi i bought this specifically for testing the output pressure on my tanks um, now i'm running a single shim in this which i believe is supposed to output to around 500 to 550 psi in this ninja tank if you look through the manual i believe now you just kind of screw this on like a regular asa i have about a little over a thousand psi left in the tank we're gonna gas it up and see what kind of output pressure we got we are at just shy of 400 PSI. So as you guys can kind of see, this is not quite meeting what you would think in the manual. So that's a pretty low pressure, 400 PSI. Uh, I'm not complaining. I, I do like running my guns between 400 to 500 PSI. So I'm okay with this. But if you're thinking uh, that you need your gun to be running at um, let's say 600 PSI and you throw a couple shims in and your tank is outputting 450 PSI there may be an issue going on or maybe it's the inverse you think you're running 450 PSI and it's actually outputting like 800 or something like that and that's an indication that it needs to be um, serviced now most guns don't really care for the the range of output pressure like most regulators these days can handle anything between 400 and 800 psi like it's not an issue for uh, a regulator in the gun to deregulate the uh it's a really loud car for a a marker a modern marker to regulate the pressure all the way down from 800 psi to 100 psi is not a big deal I mean, MacDev does it all the time with their 100 PSI operating pressures. So don't be concerned about that. The only time you really have to worry about that is for guns like Bob Long. Uh, and it's not because the regulators can't handle it. It's because the seals between the body uh, and the trigger frame can't handle that pressure. You'll displace the seals. And that's really the main issue. Um, so don't get caught up in low pressure versus high pressure. Uh, you may get some pinging with some of the PE guns running at high pressure, but it's not going to hurt your performance. Just putting that out there. Now, what are the, what other uses does this have? Now that we've kind of covered the tank, I have this Clone VX that I got in a trade. This thing was leaking terribly down uh, or out of the solenoid, and I was like, great, I just picked up a gun it is just leaking profusely through the noid and it's probably busted when in fact 
it had nothing to do with the solenoid. Uh, it had everything to do with the regulator. The regulator wasn't maintained um, or it needed servicing. It was outputting far too much pressure and it was over pressurizing the solenoid and it was purging through the noid like crazy. Now, with the older regulator like this, you can just plug in. This is why I use the duckbill one, which I have a gauge for, for 600 PSI versus 1000 on this one. Just to kind of show you guys. Now, I had this regulator shooting at around 100, uh, or around 280 feet per second, which is how it should be, right? I am going to gas up the, the marker, just like normal. And we're gonna test the output pressure of this gauge, or of this regulator. And it should be right around 100 PSI. We're gonna engage it. As you guys may be able to see, we are outputting probably around 105 PSI, which is exactly where we need to be. It's absolutely perfect. But if I had had this gauge sooner, I would have been able to diagnose this regulator far quicker um, and spent a lot less time trying to problem solve and figure out what's going on. Now, this is a $10 duckbill ASA. It just has a single um, output and I was able to plug in this this gauge and just use it as this. So all in, this only cost me $17. Highly worth the investment. Now, there are other gauges um, or other devices, like, a, like CP creates a regulator extension, um, which threads onto the top of this reg and can thread into the body. And in between, there's a gauge or a port for a gauge um, that will allow you to test on the go uh, that the recharge rate of the regulator and just to kind of monitor the output pressure and see if it's spiking at all when you're ramping or if it's uh, the reg is suffocating the gun and not actually providing enough pressure. Another upgrade you guys can do is upgrading the gauges on these manufactured uh, pressure testers that you get from for guns like the G6R here. As you guys can kind of see here, the increments in these gauges, I mean, well, one, they're very tiny, uh, but they're not very accurate. When you compare that to these larger gauges, it's a huge improvement. So uh, when I get another G6R, I'm definitely gonna be swapping out these gauges because these aren't great for, uh, for proper testing, in my opinion. So a little money for these gauges can really improve um, your ability to understand how your markers are functioning, to understand what's wrong with them, and it's it's a worthwhile investment. And uh, again, I highly recommend that everyone pick up at least one of these, just so they can test um, their output pressure in their tanks. Uh, get one between one to a thousand, and I'll uh, link it down below. One thing I want to cover is this myth that the lower pressure tank that you're running, the further you'll be able to shoot through the bottle or into the bottle and the deeper, um, giving you improved efficiency. That is 100% false and not true. Uh, that's like implying that if you push the pin in on the tank when, the air, when it's low on air, that you'll never be able to get the last remaining 300 or 800 PSI out of the tank. That's 100% false. It's the tank is still going to output air, and you'll be able to still be able to shoot well below, let's say, 800 psi output pressure that you have set. So, I just want to put that out there that that whole idea is a complete myth. Uh, it's untrue. Yeah. <laughs>